Oh man, where am I going with this motor? Where am I going with this motor? Generator. I wonder where am I going with this motor? Generator. Place this thing like this. Oh, if begin. Let's go. Now, this is the prime mover, the switch, center, here, if this switch, the material, this metal or whatever you use, is made of, is not magnetic, if it cannot be attracted by a magnet, you must place either a piece of metal or a small piece of magnet, so that every time your timing these magnets approach this metal is going to attract the metal which in return will close this part of the switch this part these two parts of the switch here and here are constantly in contact as long as the third part right here is not attracted by any magnet once this part is attracted by a magnet, this two, one and two, is no longer in contact. But two and three is now in contact, which is going to close the motor coil circuit and allow the motor to spin. Once this magnet left, once a magnet on the timing disk leaves the prime mover right here, number two, it automatically comes back to its original position and maintains contact with number one, this part right here. Okay? Now the generator is branched after being rectified, of course. If you don't have if it's a DC motor, whatever type generator, of course, it's already rectified, but here. Yeah. Generator plus, after rectification, is going to number one, number one part of the switch. And here you have your test point, number one. So you're going to put a multimeter positive, the multimeter negative is on the ground. Now, the battery is positive, it's going to the center. Once it is attracted to pole 3 right here, current leaves the battery and goes into the motor. Once this contact has been broken, it's back in contact with this thing. Number 1, current leaves the generator, goes through number 1, through number two and into the battery so you can see the battery is not pouring the motor at the same time the generator is sending energy to the battery the generator is only sending energy to the battery when this pole and the prime mover in the center is in contact when they are not in contact the generator can send, cannot send anything to the battery. When they are not in contact, the battery is in contact with the, the motor's coils. This is the timing disk right here. So imagine you have four magnets on your motor. Your motor is going to pulse four times per revolution. 
Okay, I did not place magnets over. I just showed the coils how it's branched. Yeah, four coils, so obviously you, you you could have four four magnets on this on this motor. And that's about it. Okay, then here we have prime mover. I place a very tiny magnet on this one to help out the piece of steel. It's not necessary, but I did it. There you have the generator input. There you have the base of the switch. Okay, this switch can be used as an ordinary switch just the top and the bottom this is just what's making it a double action switch right here okay circuit is set generator output is in position the grounds are together motor ground generator ground and I'm probing the first test point right there now as you can see i'm getting the batteries voltage so this causes a very interesting effect but it's multimeter averaging this effect only happens if your generator voltage is higher than the battery itself the battery's voltage now you're going to see when a magnet is in position which means the motor is in trigger position i'm going to remove the motor coil just the motor output so the i'm not shutting the circuit without the motor is running now i'm going to place a magnet in contact and the voltage disappeared battery voltage has disappeared because the switch is closed here it's open again here it's closed here it's open again Now you get the point. Let's run this business. See the beautiful effect. But it's not a dream. So let's go anyway. So first of all, the voltage is going to drop because that's the generator rising. It is the generator voltage you see, it's not the battery voltage. And then snap, it's gone. although I'm using one battery okay this is not the battery voltage in as much as the generator is producing much more voltage than the battery and a multimeter is going to average the highest voltage that's what's happening white well, looks neat Okay, so these are the experiments I was working on lately. I did this thing with two switches. One switch here and one switch down here. But there are ways to do this thing using this type of switches. Free pole switch, double action switch. Now let's go to test point number two on the battery and there that's the battery's voltage 1266 get it twelve sixty six twelve sixty five and this test point number one where the battery meets the generator got it now I'm going to turn up the motor to see how the meter is going to react on test point one of course see generator voltage is going down the meter is showing that because now 
motor is turning much more slower so the meter has more contact with the generator pole up here the pole of the generator up here so it's displaying that now what happened when the motor slows down there you have it place a magnet under it's gone pop 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 Generator right here. Ta da! Rectifier. Speed this a bit. Shut up this way. Shut up the switch in action. The switches don't miss a bit, don't oxidate, but they tend to be larger, okay? But they do the job. <laughs> 